Okay, a little bit of a follow-up just to get people caught up on how my off-grid construction works is uh, I, I do handyman work and I do fix up and now I'm getting into doing work at uh, survival retreats. And this is my old project from actually closer to two years ago, but it's been an ongoing thing. It's a uh, camper trailer, you know, pretty basic camper trailer, except that it's been set up specifically for dry camping off-grid, which means that all the lights, everything here, solar powered. Uh, I, I, I don't even come out here all that much anymore. Um, I'm basically just checking up on things right now, making sure it's all, all in okay shape. And, you know, it seems like it's not getting a lot of traffic on YouTube. A lot of people are talking about their survival retreats and, and all these other things that are related to that. Um, but for those of us who live in a city, remember, we're not there full time. Which means that we're not going to be heating and cooling the place. Um, we're, we, we, we may not be aware that there's water leakage until after it's already a lot's happened. Which was the case here last year. But I used that foam to inject into the stuff here and right now it's not leaking and it's been through a lot of rain and uh, so finally I, I you know I think I got the leaking situation handled of course I've got that mildew resisting paint mold resistant paint and then a layer of polyurethane paint on most of this so this is a very washable surface this is the, all the wood here finished with polyurethane so it's it's not going to grow mold and mildew I know I keep harping on the floor because of that tile project I'm working on at the other place. This stuff is actually more expensive than a stone tile. One of the reasons I had to go with this is, one, is this thing goes down a road, it vibrates and moves. And, um, and, and so you got to have something that's slightly flexible. That's actually a, a polymer material. Even on the wood look stuff, that's a polymer material too. It's sticky down stuff. The, the wood look stuff can shift a little bit, which is one thing I, 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 I haven't liked about it. But overall, it does what it's supposed to do. It looks pretty good. Was uh, not killer expensive, but it, it's almost the same price as real wood. One of the things here, though, is because I'm relatively tall, is I, I can't use a, a thicker flooring material here that would start uh, hurting my headroom inside the camper. Now this little section is real wood, but that's just kind of a decorative section. It's not even all done yet. This section of the entire floor had previously been replaced when it was water damage. And, uh, and so I, I, I had to do something to make it look good because it was all uneven. And normally this was under a queen bed. So I, I made a wraparound couch because this thing's uh, only functions as a living quarters in an emergency. Other than that, it, it functions as kind of a little office gathering place where people would be staying in tents. And then, of course, the kitchen and bathroom. But on that flooring option, you got to remember, carpet is an absolute, positive, absolute no-go for a infrequently occupied survival retreat. And then, you know, if you're in a should hit the same fan or major decline situation, assume the cleaning supplies may be a little more difficult to get a hold of. But these types of floors, okay, hot water, hot water and a mop, hot water and a broom, hot water and some old towels, and, and you're, you get it clean. And it sounds stupid, but cleanliness is going to mean a lot for morale. Now, I got some stuff here that's a mess, old, old computer stuff, again, relatively low value stuff. Um, for somebody to break into the storage lot and then expect to be able to get out of here with enough value to be worth their time, kind of pushing it, okay? Um, uh, storage food isn't really a, you know, major burglary item. Uh, but guys, think about that whole mold, mildew, weather issue on, on any of this kind of stuff. Now, the refrigerator had gone bad here. Even the one I replaced it with went bad, so I, part of this year's projects is going to involve re replacing that. This area here looks bad because it had been leaking, but normally that's all covered up by the fridge installation. So I, I'm maybe putting a propane fridge back in here. I'd rather just go electric only because I'm capable of producing the electricity. On the other hand, in colder weather where you're producing less electricity, yeah, you can put your food in the tote bin containers and uh, it's going to be just fine, okay? Again, my, my solar here, operating at 100%. We're all happy. Here, I've got a little evidence of possibly some leaking. I'm going to have to take a look at that at some point. And uh, 
I'm not quite sure what that is because there's no no water in here. Um, no, no water. Just old old evidence of leaking. We'll make sure the inverter works. Yep, we're we're up and running there. The 12 volt system, of course, feeds the lights, which are all functional. Now, here's the other thing you got to look at. Now, I I put these improvised curtains up that are only semi improvised this is this is actually something you, you get at the store those curtains are a curtain wire okay that's a curtain wire system from um, Ikea okay and I, not very expensive 12 bucks each the thing I like is with these little clips you you can uh, use just about anything as a curtain so I I gonna like the old towels because they offer a little bit more insulating value the the problem is with this little curtain design is you you actually i installed this according to the instructions not realizing it really if you if you want to have privacy real privacy in these things you, you actually have to mount them about six inches above the window uh, because it's, there's a lot of sag involved with that a lot more than if you had a conventional curtain outfit where I thought, well, I'm getting four inches, three, four inches above the glass here, and that's that's not going to be a problem. But but you have to realize anything like this, you want to be able to take off, clean in a bleach bucket, uh, have it serve multiple purposes, and I can get these brown towels from Walmart cheaper than curtains. Now here in the closet, here's here's where I ran into a problem. Okay, and why you got to really look out mold, mildew, rot, uh, vermin. Got to, you got to look out for that and, and keep cloth, mold, mildew, rot, vermin, uh, attractive type stuff closed up, locked up, tote bin container type thing. Nothing here smells, nothing here has a problem, although some of these, this this new ACU jacket, I guess. Um, no, nah, no, mil well, maybe got a little hint of something going on there, but... Um, is I sniff it, I, I think it's all right because these have like a factory mold mildew resistant thing. But once mold or mildew gets in anything in this stuff, you got a problem. Here I, I have a nylon jack, uh, a backpack. There it is. Okay, this was washed, and uh, I don't know if you can see it, but that shit there that is not dirt. Okay, that is mold. I washed this before. I used it last. You can tell the interior has been washed several times. I don't know how I got mold on this, but not on other stuff in here. But it's heading back with me and getting washed. Uh, there's visible moisture here. And uh, I, I can't really tell what it's coming from. So you got to check up on your stuff. Uh, remember, check up on your stuff. Um, yeah, no moisture in that for some reason. That's a wool sweater. The other thing I, I'm looking at is, because I've got some old uniform items here. Now, some of this is just loner stuff at this point. Um, but, you know, you can outgrow some of these clothes. I, I no longer wear regular or large or medium. Uh, this shirt here was a man's large. Barely goes anymore. I, I don't know. Maybe I keep it around for sentimental value. I don't like the way that feels damp. So... That's come, maybe coming back with me or hanging out in the open. You got to realize if you hang something in the open like this, though, the vermin may not be able to... Shit, that is damp. I, I, uh, I think part of what my problem here has been is that there's a ventilation for... Fuck, I can't tell. Um, there's a ventilation that happens here for the toilet system. And I, I, I think it's not 100% sealed up top. Maybe there was a stronger than usual rain. It got some moisture in here or condensation. Really hard to tell. But that's going to have to get cleared out and dealt with. So just, just think about this, folks. Moisture, condensation, weather-related issues on a survival tree, whether it's your camper or a building, are going to play a major role in your design and build uh, choices okay it needs to play probably the most important role because I'm I got to go through this stuff make sure we don't have water damage I'm I got a point here that feels like maybe water I don't know I'm gonna drill a hole there see what's going on 
but remember it's not just flooring choices for low maintenance but everything it's got to be low maintenance got to be able to sit for a long period of time and still be there when you need it 